Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Instead of going through a USB or firewire interface. Wait, what are you saying? Wait. Uh, all, most newer computers now will have a, an external SATA port on the back, like on the back panel where you're playing the keyboard and the monitor and stuff. They actually have a, a SATA port for what's called eSATA. And then instead of using USB or firewire for your external storage devices, you can actually plug using like you plug the external drive in with SATA as if it was actually internal, to the oh. and you get the same speed as an internal. So you can get like the SATA two is what like uh, two hundred and fifty megabytes a second if your drive can do that much. Your drive can't, but yeah, you get a much more bandwidth. And it's basically specifically designed for hard drives rather than USB that's designed for everything all kinds of devices. Yeah. What? And multiple devices. I have and an power e management. Yeah. yeah, I have an eSATA port on the back of this particular machine, um, but I've never. I've I've been nervous using it with Windows Vista. But I don't think Macs ship with uh, eSATA ports. Well, at least MacBook Pros don't. Maybe well, maybe the Mac Pro. It might be rare on laptops because laptops are kind of different. True. But. So the, yeah. The Drobo is, uh, I, I was, I was but ESATA is, technically ESATA isn't special. You can actually get just a, a, a bracket for one of the you know the back slots on your computer there, and just a really long SATA cable and string it from the inside to the outside. It's just not as pretty. And where are you saying about Drobo? Uh, it for is it Drobo or Dropo? Um, Drobo, D R O B O. Okay. And what it does is, uh, it, it's basically like a RAID. RAID storage device and you plugs into your PC or Mac it's USB 2.0 and you can uh, you just basically put put a hard drive in and then if you want to extend the storage you add another hard drive and if you want to add more storage you add another hard drive and it's hot swappable um, it's just you know you could put up I believe up to one terabyte drives so you can have four terabytes of data and I think that you'll have about a 360 gigabyte uh, three Point six terabytes. Whoa! Of uh, of oh, space. Usable storage, eh? Yeah. It's because it uses some of the storage for redundancy, so that when you put yes. it in the drives out, you don't lose anything. Yes. Least, so basically, you pull out one drive and put in another one, and it replicates the data that just went missing. Yeah. So you don't lose anything. Everything's it, always accessible. It's really, it's really nice. There's indicator lights on on the drawbar itself, so it tells you which drive is running out of space, which drive needs to be replaced. Uh, so what you can do is, you know. When the when all the lights are green, basically you can just open up the front of the drobo and slide out the drive that's indicating red, slide in the new drive, and then it rebuilds the array. Wow. And it has. I think we're going to see. That, I think we're going to see a lot more new stuff like that based on uh, Sun invented this new file system called ZFS. I, I've read about ZFS. And it's uh, it's basically designed for this kind of flexible where you um, you basically you decide that you're you, you're going to make a partition that's going to be like 16 terabytes and then you assign like the first 100 gigabytes of that to a specific device and the rest of that is like completely unassigned and you can just keep adding hard drives in the future without ever having to reformat and you can add and remove hard drives that make up these this virtual four terabyte or 16 terabyte drive and you can just keep basically completely abstracts the hardware from the this virtual hard drive Mm -hmm. Like the file system. The file system is independent of the devices. How so the hell they pull that off? Remove devices and change them. What, the, the dr uh, uh, what Dory's talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's basically the, the way the file system works. The driver for the file system abstracts it so that basically you assign space out of this uh, array that you've created to. Right, the first 100 gigabytes that of this partition go on this drive, and the next 100 gigabytes go on a different drive. And you can move this stuff around, and basically you never get to the, the end of the drive because you're never going to have that many drives. But it means that if you basically if you format the drive to be one terabyte, and then eventually you run out of space, you can't just extend the partition very easily. So instead of doing that, you basically make it a ginormous like infinite number and then just fill it up with actual don't buy the hard drive until you need them. Hmm. That's nice. Now is that a local that, that's it. They're using that. Is that a local thing or is that gonna work with like uh, network attached storage? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's not a distributed okay. it's not a distributed file system. But okay. I think it's uh, with 
things like uh, iSCSI, it's probably going to be moving to that direction where it's actually going to be distributed. Now, with, with like fiber channels and stuff, you're going to have story, like network transfer that's fast enough that it's actually outpacing the hard drive so that you could have the hard drives external to the computer and be as fast as if they were inside, mm -hmm. that you could do a distributed file system like that. Mm -hmm. But I think you're going to see a lot of, of the devices like the Drobo coming out based on, because uh, FreeBSD is probably going to be the first operating system other than Solaris which is made by Sun to have support for ZFS, and because of its license being BSD, means that you can take the open source code, make a proprietary product, and sell it, and you don't have to contribute back the code you made. So it's basically specifically designed for commercial applications. So you're going to see devices running FreeBSD as an embedded system with ZFS and basically hot swappable hard drive slots, and you can just do all kinds of crazy things. Like do, now, do you That's use amazing. any NAS at home, or what do you use for external drives? I mean, I'm assuming you don't connect by USB. And were you saying? Uh, I, I used to have one USB one. Now I, I just have a separate computer that has a, like eight uh, SATA slots. Yeah. And it's just all full of hard drives. Yeah, it's just a yeah. And then it just runs through SD. Yeah, I can't imagine uh, having a network drive on USB. Firewire, yeah. No. Um, ESATA like, or SATA, yeah, definitely. The most, the, like, the most I managed to get over USB was 20 or 25 megabytes a second, where with my uh, gigabit over FTP, I'm getting at least 60. Yeah. And that's on, like, like $10, that's like a $10 D-Link low-end network card. And then the other end is an onboard card, and I'm not talking, like, the Intel $100 gigabit server cards. If I had those, I imagine my speed would even double that. Mm -hmm. I've had, uh, I think one of the products I had was an Asbox from, uh, I think it was Bitech, was it? Yeah, and that's the name of the company. I mean, it it's, wasn't. Uh, they, it's, it's like they're not, TCC or something like that. Yeah, they're not that bad, but you know, they're not fast at all. And and they all they had reliability issues. The firmware is, is really. Um, was it Linux based or? It's Linux. It, it is Linux based. Uh, I think a lot of the problem is that uh, the Windows, the Samba, is based on the, the Windows server message block protocol, and it's mm. it's really inefficient. Like I can't. I, I can't like, journal. Like, double the speeds on my net if I if I transfer the files over FTP, uh, net, like I use a FileZilla FTP server mm. to transfer the files between my computers instead of doing it over the Samba file sharing. It's probably twice as fast. Wow. Because Windows is always it's always checking the size of the file at the other end and doing things to clutter up the connection. It's always waiting to see if it got written and checking permissions and stuff and it's just inefficient. That's another thing that we're supposed to fix in Vista, which they didn't. Anybody who's ever tried to copy files from the same partition or whatever in Vista noticed that it spends like two hours calculating how long it's gonna take instead of just doing it. So apparently they fix that. But. There, there's, I mean, if, I know like some people were telling me, you know, uh, build your own NAS box, you know, like uh, free NAS. It's, it's, or, really, it's really easy. Free yeah, NAS, I know. Uh, yeah, free, NAS, free NAS, by the way, is built on FreeBSD. Yeah, I know. It's it, From what I've been reading, it's like, it's probably the number one choice to, to build a, yes. a, a, the, uh, a, a NAS box. The, the, file, the, the, the file system that FreeBSD uses is Far superior to the Linux one, but that's beside the point. Yeah, but I mean, if you want to build a super fast NAS box, it probably would use something like like free NAS, you know, and yeah. have, uh, have an onboard uh, gigabit adapter and yeah, you know, that's it. And it's probably or the storage could be probably depending what you depending on what you're doing, but you can end up doing something with, where you get a, a pair of uh, teaming network cards, mm -hmm. so that uh, especially if the way your network is set up, you have multiple people accessing the NAS at the same time. Yeah. If you can, if the NAS has more than one gigabit network card, then that means that each client can be getting the gigabit at the same time. That's nice. So, but then it depends on your the quality of your switches and the total throughput on the switch fabric and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have like a five port pin net uh, gigabit switch that I spent like you know, thirty dollars on or whatever. But you know. It's still six times faster than my old 100 megabit network. 
I, I bet. mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, once you go gigabit, you can't go back. That's for darn sure. Yeah, it, definitely. Gigabit. When your file way. transfers are are pretty much limited by your the speed of your hard drive instead of the speed of your network, mm -hmm. it's just glorious. <laughs> and running something like it's it's nice to run like Windows file sharing and stuff like that, but like with with the NAS boxes, it's just dedicated to file file serving. That's all it does. So. Yep. Yeah, so, but you know, like it's, it's been tuned for uh, doing larger blocks of data out of the network card and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's like another thing is like if um, your network card does the whole jumbo frames thing, especially for when you're getting up into the gigabit speeds, is that instead of doing fifteen hundred bytes at a time, if you're doing eight thousand bytes at a time, it makes a big difference too. Mm -hmm. But that's the support for that is a little iffy on the lower end. Yeah, well, I would be afraid with you know if you ever had like a catastrophic failure of a drive, you know, with uh, free NAS and you have multiple, like maybe set up a RAID. Hopefully, hopefully there's there's support documentation if anything ever happens. I mean, it's yeah, but uh, if it, if it's based on free NAS, then it's based on the the FreeBSD file system, which is specifically designed to be like crash proof. Like it's specifically designed to be able to be writing and take the power outage and then come back and uh, it, even does, it, it can do, like you know how uh, Windows will do the check disk when you reboot or whatever? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, FreeBSD has a system called a, a background check. It does like a like a 30 second quick prime check to make sure that the boot sector and everything's intact. But then it actually lets you get to the drive and then it runs the scan in the background. Okay. And it, basically it's meant to get the server back online and so that you can like connect to it while it fixes itself. So mm -hmm. that you don't, so that you don't think it's completely toast, and you know, go drive across town to figure out why. Yeah. 